heard all across the United States, Canada, and around the world. This is the Bible Answer Man broadcast with Hank Hanegraaff. Hank is president of the Christian Research Institute. At CRI, our desire is to equip you not only to defend the historic Christian faith, but to become a winsome witness to a spiritually hungry but skeptical world, because life and truth matter. To learn more, or to find resources to help you grow in grace, call 888-7000-CRI or go online to equip.org. That's equip.org. The following program was pre-recorded. And now, here's Hank Hanegraaff. Yeah, thank you very much, Randy. You can also contact us via the mail at Box 8500, Charlotte, North Carolina, zip code 28271. Randy just mentioned Equip.org, great information available on Equip.org. The information has the good housekeeping seal of approval. In other words, you can trust the information, but also on the web at Equip.org, you can find the Hank Unplugged podcast, which has been called Christian Thinking, Aged and Nuanced Like a Fine Wine. And we're getting more and more five-star ratings, and that is expanding the reach of Hank Unplugged throughout the world. One of those ratings, Hank Hanegraaff has been faithfully studying and articulating Christian truth claims about the reality of the Christian worldview for decades. This lifelong experience shows in his his sensitive and knowing approach to these long-form interviews, Hank Unplugged is consistently edifying in mind and spirit. Thanks, Hank. Another by Mark Williams. I was very impressed with Jackie. What a thoughtful, articulate, and gracious lady she is. Thanks, Hank. Another brilliant interview. I will get the book. Of course, the book that he's talking about is Gay Girl, Good God, the story of who Jackie Hill Perry once was and who God has always been. And she meets our criteria, our mission statement, that we bring the most interesting, informative, and inspirational people directly to your earbuds. Well, on today's special edition of the Bible Answer Man broadcast, I want to talk about a headline I saw recently in the Wall Street Journal. It seemed ominous. It read, Hagia Sophia reverts to mosque. And yet the headlines, well, they're a mere microcosm of what is happening to Western civilization. Churches are being turned into bars. And bars are seemingly more sacred to Christians than churches. In other words, Christianity is becoming increasingly secular. Ironically, tragically, precisely the opposite is taking place within Islam. And nothing could be more emblematic of this ominous trend than the turning of what once was the symbol of Christian worship from a museum into a mosque. But let me back up for just a second. The Hagia Sophia was built in 537. It was built under the the direction of the Byzantine Emperor Justinian. After the capture of Constantinople, that took place in 1453, the basilica was turned into a mosque. Constantinople was renamed Istanbul. And Islam, well, Islam continued its insidious journey toward turning all of Europe into an Islamic stronghold. Had the Ottoman Empire succeeded in 1683 when it besieged the gates of Vienna, Europe today might well be called Eurabia. Instead, beginning September 11 of that very year, the Ottoman Caliphate experienced humiliating defeat at the hands of Jan Sobieski, who was a king, a king willing to abandon all that was dearest 
to halt the advance of the Islamic juggernaut. And from that day onward, the Ottoman Empire began, well, let's call it a precipitous decline, until on March 3rd, that infamous date in 1924, Mustafa Kemal abolished the caliphate altogether. He banished the remaining caliph. Kemal, who famously took on, you might recall, the surname Ataturk, which literally means Father Turk. He summed up all that is Islam as the theology of an immoral Arab and set himself to the task of founding a secular Turkish state out of the ruins of the caliphate. It's amazing to think back on what he did. He closed all religious courts and schools. Think about that. He lifted a ban on alcohol. He adopted the Gregorian calendar in place of the Islamic calendar. He made Sunday a day of rest instead of Friday. He changed the Turkish alphabet from Arabic letters to Roman letters. He mandated that the call to prayer be in Turkish rather than Arabic. And he even forbade the wearing of the fez. Mustafa Kemal's government espoused industrialization and adopted new law codes based on European models. Why? Because he said the civilized world is far ahead of us. And so we have no choice but to catch up to them. Now, Ataturk was certain that Islam had seen its heyday. Islam, this theology of an immoral Arab, is a dead thing, he said. Possibly, possibly it might have suited tribes of nomads in the desert. It was no good for a modern progressive state. Vladiturk was right in asserting that Islam is no good for a modern progressive state. But he was dead wrong in supposing it was dead. I say that because Islam has not only survived his abolition of the caliphate, it has thrived. Today, Islam, this is hard to say, but it's true. Islam has surpassed Christianity as the fastest growing religion in the world. And it is uniquely poised to reshape and replace Christianity in the West. Polygamy, along with immigration, has caused Islam to experience dramatic growth in Europe, where over millions of Muslims are replenishing the empty spaces left by aging and abortion-obsessed Europeans. Let me put it plainly. Not one post-Christian nation now has a birth rate sufficient to keep it alive. The Christian West faces an inescapable reality. When the faith dies, the culture dies. Civilization dies. The people die. To compound the population problem is an acute persecution problem. In the West, Christians face the specter of militant secularism. And no one has depicted this reality better than the brilliant author and essayist Mary Eberstadt. I've had her on the broadcast. She soberly notes that the C for Christian has become the new scarlet letter. And yet all of this is but the tip of the Muslim spear. While Christians are being marginalized in the West, they're being martyred in the East. In Iraq, a majority of Christians have been either executed or exiled. In Mosul, Iraq, one of the oldest Christian communities in the world, almost every Christian in the city fled after ISIS offered exile or death. 
churches across Iraq now stand empty. And the same is true in Syria. And then added to the population and persecution problem is the propaganda problem. Over and over in myriad ways, the West is being seduced into believing that Islam is a religion of peace and tolerance. Conversely, that Christianity is a crusader religion and as such, the epitome of intolerance. When I come back from the break, I want to talk about solutions to this problem. Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world. Christianity is still the largest religion in the world, but Islam the fastest growing religion in the world. And there's a reason for that. There's also a reason by which all of that can be changed and in our lifetime. We'll talk about all that and more when we come back from the break. Stay tuned. Gay Girl, Good God chronicles Jackie Hill Perry's journey out of a homosexual lifestyle, a much needed testimony for a time when society has embraced radical changes to traditional views of sexual identity. Jackie Hill Perry didn't write Gay Girl, Good God merely to point out the mistakes of her past, but to shine light on the beauty of a relationship with a good God while helping people understand the realities of same-sex attraction. To receive your copy of Gay Girl, Good God, call 888-7000-CRI and make a gift to support the Christian Research Institute's life-changing outreaches, 888-7000-CRI, or visit us at equip.org. We'll be back in just a moment with more from Hank Hanegraaff. Hank Hanegraaff has dedicated his life to defending truth because truth matters. Yet an encounter with Christians in the underground church of China left Hanegraaff contemplating his Christian experience. They were experiencing something beyond truth. They were experiencing life. Truth Matters, Life Matters More by Hank Hanegraaff is two books in one. Because Truth Matters, part one equips Christians to defend the essential truths of the historic Christian faith. In part two, Hank explains why life matters more and how we can experience the height of human existence, union with God. Prepare to move past intellectually knowing about God to experientially knowing God in Christ. To receive your copy of Truth Matters, Life Matters More, The Unexpected Beauty of an Authentic Christian Life, call 888-7000-CRI and make a gift to support the Christian Research Institute's life-changing outreaches, 888-7000-CRI, or visit us at equip.org. Jackie Hill Perry used to be a lesbian. In Gay Girl, Good God, she shares her story of embracing masculinity and homosexuality with every fiber of her being. She knew the Christian worldview on sexual identity, but how was she supposed to stop loving women when homosexuality felt more natural to her than heterosexuality ever could? Ultimately, Jackie came face to face with what it meant to be made new. God broke in and turned her heart toward Him right in her own bedroom through the light of His gospel. Read Gay Girl, Good God in order to understand. Read in order to hope. Or read in order, like Jackie, to be made new. To receive your copy of Gay Girl, Good God, call 888-7000-CRI and make a gift to support the Christian Research Institute's life-changing outreaches, 888-7000-CRI, or visit us at equip.org. The history of Islam is one of wanton carnage and horrific oppression, and it has been whitewashed beyond recognition by our politically correct elites. According to credible sources, 120 million Africans, 80 million Hindus, 60 million Christians, 10 million Buddhists have been slaughtered in the name of Islam. And that doesn't include the millions of Muslims killed by other Muslims. Islam is the only significant religious system in the history of the human race with a socio-political structure of laws that mandate violence against the infidel. Read Hank Hanegraaff's stunning book, Muslim, What You Need to Know About the World's Fastest Growing religion. Receive your copy as our appreciation for your financial partnership when you call 888-7000-CRI and make a gift to support CRI's life-changing outreaches, 888-7000-CRI or visit equip.org.
Now back to the Bible Answer Man broadcast and your host, Hank Hanegraaff. Thank you very much, Randy. I'm talking today about a headline in the Wall Street Journal that brought a lot of thoughts to my mind. The headline, as I mentioned in the first segment of the broadcast, was simply Agia Sophia reverts to a mosque. It brought to my mind the fact that Islam has now surpassed Christianity as the fastest growing religion in the world. Now, what is happening in the West is dramatic. We have a population problem. Islam is overwhelming us in terms of polygamous births. Their population is growing rapidly, but we are aborting our own aging, aborted Westerners. In addition to that, population problem is a persecution problem and a propaganda problem. Just before we went to break, I mentioned that over and over again, in myriad ways, the West is being seduced into believing that Islam is a religion of peace and tolerance, and that Christianity is a crusader religion, the epitome of intolerance. That lost in all of the pandering and propaganda is the truth that if Islam is anything at all, it's theocratic. Quranic theology recognizes no separation between Sharia and state, only that Sharia is state and state is Sharia. And no one understands that more than does the 12th and present president of Turkey, Erdogan, who signed a decree transferring the management of Hagia Sophia from the Ministry of Culture to the Directorate of Religious Affairs. Social chaos in the West, along with its consequences, has only emboldened his radical Islamist policies. The only question that remains to be answered is whether Christianity once again will do for the truth what Erdogan is doing for a lie. The despotism of militant egalitarianism, radical individualism, multiculturalism, political correctness, religious pluralism, are not magically redeemed by political victories. Even during the Reagan revolution, illiberal liberalism continued to hold sway in the educational, entertainment, and environmental industries that create, that manipulate, that disseminate ideological constructs that are driving Western civilization in a very, very dangerous direction. The only real solution to a disintegrating West and to a resurgent Islam is the power of the Eucharist. Imagine that. Where else have you heard that? The power of the Eucharist that once resided in the hallowed spaces of Hagia Sophia. It's not enough for Christians to be intellectually equipped to communicate the truth of the gospel. We must also be internally equipped during this anti-Judeo-Christian moment in our culture. Now what that means is that the church has to be energized for its mission. Energized by a power that is in it but not of it. As underscored by the Apostle Paul, those like you and I who are made perfect in Christ should not be laboring in our own energy. Rather, we ought to labor with all Christ's energy, which so powerfully works in us. The Father's greatest gift to you and I who have been saved through the death of His Son is the impartation of a new order of life. It's an order of life that is of the same quality as the life of Christ, because that's precisely what it is. 
It's the impartation of the life of Christ by which the incarnation continues. The descent of the ineffable in incarnation provides the ladder of divine ascent by which fallen humanity might rise up to union with God. This is precisely what the apostle Peter is talking about when he talks about participating in the divine nature. And of course, the disciples got a glimpse of inexhaustible energy on the Mount of Transfiguration. I love this story. It was there that Peter, James, and John witnessed a dazzling display of uncreated power. They witnessed the face of Christ when it shone like the sun, when his clothes became as white as the light, when Moses and Elijah, who themselves had experienced divine energy, appeared, was the text says, appeared as a bright cloud covered the disciples, and they themselves experienced the ultimate lawgiver, the archetypal prophet in glorious splendor, and were themselves enveloped in uncreated energy. And that is the energy that alone is sufficient to empower the body of Christ in the present clash of civilizations within the Eucharistic assembly that once long, long ago marked Agia Sophia. Divine life flowed into us as Christians it penetrated the fabric of our humanity. And it is the power, the very power, if you go all the way back to the embryonic stages of Christianity, it's the power that enabled men like Polycarp, Polycarp of Smyrna, to remain resolute when afforded the blasphemous opportunity to repeat an in vacation to the deities of pagan Rome. It's the power that spread Christianity throughout the Roman Empire. And it is the mysterium tremendum et fescinans, the mystery that makes us tremble and yet attracts us. It is the mysterious energy by which we may yet reclaim the soul of the world against the forces of insistent secularism and Islamic jihad. By this power, the Agia Sophia can be transformed not merely from a mosque back into a museum, but from a mosque into a monument to Messiah's transforming power. While there are other graces by which we may partake of the divine nature, nothing, nothing, nothing is more needful to sustain the church in the wasteland of a warped and wicked world than the supernatural manna dispensed to us through the Eucharist. Through the Lord's Supper, we may be refreshed and strengthened so that we do not succumb in the struggle, but instead become stronger and stronger. And this is necessary for the sake of the world, not only to save Western civilization, but to cause Western civilization to continue to be a mission-sending force to the rest of the world, a world that is perishing. Consider the fact that there are billions who have yet to hear the good news. And we have the resources to make a difference. We cannot lose Western civilization. But we are losing it. We're losing it to Islam, unless, that is, 
We are energized by a power that is in us, but not of us. I've written about that in a number of different places, including Truth Matters, Life Matters More, The Unexpected Beauty of an Authentic Christian Life. I've also written about Islam, the book Muslim, What You Need to Know About the World's Fastest Growing Religion. Both of those resources available on the web, equip.org. Equip yourself. Make a difference. And in the process, stand shoulder to shoulder with us in the battle for life and truth. The books I just referenced are available as well on the web at equip.org and via the mail at Box 8500, Charlotte, North Carolina, zip code 28271. Thanks for tuning in to this special edition of the Bible Answer Man broadcast. God bless you as you stand. And after you've done all, you stand. Thank you for listening to the Bible Answer Man broadcast with Hank Hanegraaff. An appreciation for your vital gift to help strengthen and expand the life-changing outreaches of the Christian Research Institute, Hank would like to send you the book, Gay Girl, Good God by Jackie Hill Perry. Simply call 888-7000-CRI and make a gift to support CRI's life-changing outreaches, 888-7000-CRI, or visit equip.org. That's equip.org. You can also write to CRI at Post Office Box 8500, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28271. The preceding program was pre-recorded. The Bible Answer Man broadcast is funded solely by listeners like you. We're on the air because truth matters and life matters more. Jackie Hill Perry used to be a lesbian. In Gay Girl, Good God, she shares her story of embracing masculinity and homosexuality with every fiber of her being. She knew the Christian worldview on sexual identity, But how was she supposed to stop loving women when homosexuality felt more natural to her than heterosexuality ever could? Ultimately, Jackie came face to face with what it meant to be made new. God broke in and turned her heart toward Him right in her own bedroom through the light of His gospel. Read Gay Girl, Good God in order to understand. Read in order to hope. Or read in order, like Jackie, to be made new. To receive your copy of Gay Girl, Good God, call 888-7000-CRI and make a gift to support the Christian Research Institute's life-changing outreaches, 888-7000-CRI, or visit us at equip.org.